I got a message, right? And this is just a regular text message coming straight to my phone. This is from one of my good, good friends, almost like a brother to me, man. I've known I known this guy for over 30 years. Gotta give a big, big shout out to my homie, man. He is a retired Marine First Sergeant. He messages me and he says, hey, what up, bro? He said, I'm just sitting here watching your video on how Army Drill Sergeant reacts to how the Marine drills do. Uh, it's a video that I made two years ago. He said, it's a pretty dope content, but he said he said he wants to make a little clarification. He said, I made the comment, I guess, on how the drill instructors act towards recruits about giving up and stuff like that when they say they want to give up. Let me see if I could just play it, man. Hey man, I'm just sitting here watching your uh, video on uh, Army Drill Sergeant reacts on how a Marine drill. Two years ago, pretty dope content, but I was just going to make a little clarification. So you made the comment <coughs> on how like uh, one of your trainees was wanting to give up and then how you told that individual, no, I'm not going to let you give up. And then at the end of the training, where that trainee came up to you and thanked you X, Y, Z. The difference between the Army and the, and the Marine Corps, we are opposite. We don't do that. You see it in the video too, like in all the videos, we push them to their max limit. This is like the initial step. Like, this is like the initiation. And if you need help getting through that, maybe you're at the wrong place. Then after they, they make it through this portion right here, especially towards the end, they start treating them differently, but they're not there to motivate them. Even like if you see the, the, like the senior drone instructor, the, the head of the, the platoon, when it comes to drone instructors, they're only loyal to him. They're not loyal to any other drone instructors on the, on the team. But only person who's like, if they were to motivate them, it would be the senior drone instructor. The other drone instructors, especially that the one that's on the, the most junior, chaos, hate, and destruction. And then the other one that's above him is just teaching knowledge, but he got to know how to turn it off and on. And then the one that's up right next to the, the senior drone instructor, he or she teaches all the drill and XYZ, but they're like the right hand man of the, of, of the platoon. But I say all that to say this, like I said, just it is a little bit different. Like we don't like motivate them, and I'm not gonna let you give up, and all that stuff. Nah, nah, they ain't made it. We want to push them to where they, you know, they can, you know, stay on their own. But all right, man. Yeah, so it was a lot easier to do it that way. And uh, I've had that message for about two weeks now, almost all, almost a month, and I don't know why I have been waiting on it. But yeah. Uh, I gotta give a big, big shout out to my homie, Gerald, man. We call him the Goose. We call him G now. We used to call him the Goose because he used to ride a Mongoose bike. That was his like favorite bike to ride. But big shout out to him. Definitely somebody for me to look up to. Uh, big brother, man. Really passionate about that dude, man. He, when we were younger, he used to pick on me a lot, but I feel like he was all out of love. A lot of jokes, man. A lot, a lot of jokes. A lot of picking on me. I'm the littlest dude in the crew. He's the biggest dude in the crew. So he always hustled and worked extra overtime, full, you know what I'm saying? Whenever we worked together, a little fast food restaurant, whatever the case may be, always took the closing hours. He would always close up the store, work overtime as much as he could so he can get as much money as he could, man. Even, even in high school, before we graduated high school, I'm talking about in eighth, ninth grade, this guy was working at the commissary, just bagging up groceries, saving up his money, doing what he had to do. He had the freshest sneaks, everything he wanted. He had it, he was good. Uh, but he's definitely somebody for me to look up to, man. Really passionate about that dude, and I really do appreciate his uh, his point of view on the diff just the differences between basic training in the army and then boot camp, you know, with the Marines, man. It's 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 just good to hear that from him. And I I love his. I know he has a passion for it. His the his the raspiness in his voice. You know, like he's been through a lot in the freaking Marine Corps. It's just wild, man. It's crazy. A lot of experience with that dude, man. Once again, man, uh, First Sergeant retired Gerald Weber in the United States Marine Corps, man. Really do appreciate that a lot, brother. Thank you, thank you. Now, I will say that it's not, it kind of is, it's not really like a standard, like we have to motivate them. If they want to give up, it's just, it's a process. It's a process on how we, on how they go, you know, but still it's i feel like it's just it's that's our job to motivate them you know what i'm saying to push them along help push them along i would much more like it like no if you if you need motivation to get it then i don't know i like i like how g put it maybe you're in the wrong maybe you're in the wrong program maybe you're in the wrong spot and when i say i wouldn't let them give up like if they truly wanted to like not you know it's got to be it's got to be more than them just saying one day, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Shut up, get out of my face, and go freaking do it. You didn't need it. Did you even try? That's my thing. You have to. You're, they're gonna try first, and if they physically can't do it, 
or if they are just mentally out of it, they've been to, they've been to sick call multiple times, they physically can't do it, or behavior health is saying, yeah, they're not fit for the Army, then okay, cool, yeah, we let them go. I like the differences between the Army and the Marine Corps. I wish that the Army would pick up a little bit more on how the Marine Corps operates and how they do things, and I wish that we can incorporate that into how we actually do uh, all of our things with the trainees, uh, basic training, all that good stuff. If one wants out of the Army training quickly, pass basic training. Defiance has hit the nail on the head with that. If you wanna get out of basic training, just pass basic training, if that's what you wanna do. The longer it takes for you to get through basic training, you're not gonna go to AIT. It could suck, man. Like you, let's say you have three years on your contract and for some reason you spend a year, like you can really spend a year and a half to doing basic training stuff, basic training to AIT. If you happen to go to FTU and you need to go there to heal or whatever the case may be, you're, by the time you get out, you have, you know, a year left on your contract. You go to your first unit. That's how it is, man. I don't know. It's, it's a strange, strange thing when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, just push through, get through it, try a little bit harder, and go ahead and do what you got to do, man. Defiance says, seeing too many sit call rangers in AIT unit. Most definitely, man. And then you get them holdovers, people who don't graduate on time with everybody else, and they have to stay to the next unit and whatever the case may be, or they move to another unit that's already, you know, halfway through their freaking training and then whatever the case may be. Right?